Hey everyone and welcome back. In today's video just having a look at some new additions. So I'll go through them one by one and then I'll uh, let you know where I got them from. So I've got here a Fralia Asteroides. Um, nice little plant, seed grown. Very very clean. Um, no blemishes or anything like that. Um, and an interesting uh, fact about this particular cactus is that it is self-fertile um, and to such an extent that sometimes there won't even be a flower but it will actually produce seed um, so a little like a little pyramidy uh, type thing will pop up uh, from the center obviously and um, once it becomes loose the seeds ripe and you pluck it out and you get around 20 to 30 seeds um, so really really nice um, relatively spine free I mean it does have spines but more of those sort of um, wispy ones so they won't actually they won't spear you in the slightest uh, and this guy will continue to grow out and get a little bit larger the uh, eventual size I'm not uh, not too familiar with so we'll just have to wait and see and then up next we've got this guy here absolutely stunning stunning love this plant um, and this is a Neoporteria um, flacosa um, which uh, is now in the uh, Eriosis family um, and you may see in there um, a couple of little mealy bugs so I'll get rid of those um, a really nice looking plant heavy spines these ones will hurt um, and you can see he's still growing he's got those nice fresh red spines and you need to be careful uh, with these uh, cacti um, or any in general actually uh, when they've got fresh spines as they are not very well attached to the plant and if you bump them they will actually come out it doesn't necessarily hurt the uh, cactus all that much um, but it just means that when uh, when the growth comes down the, the uh, body of the plant like this it won't look as nice because it'll be missing some and uh, so we'll keep moving along and then I've got here this is a Neoporteria Clavada um, Sarah Mama, I think, if I'm saying that right, I don't know. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that I don't have both of these Neoporteria's, which um, are now in the Eriosis family, which which I disagree with, but you've heard me say that a million times, so we'll just uh, we'll move on from that. But this guy's awesome. Um, these spines are really sharp, um, and uh, he's got an awesome body colour, purple and greens. Um, and then the spines at the top are this nice sort of, the fresh ones are nice sort of bone colour. Um, really, really nice plant. Um, big fan of the Eriosis family. They're, they're really uh, they're really interesting and I love the, the form and even their flowers are incredible as well. So they're all around, um, all around really good plant. Alright, let's keep going. We've got here uh, Labivia Pygmae. Pygmae? Um, and the variety is Hajj. Uh, so this is a, a Libivia obviously. Um, these spines aren't, won't stick you. Um, they will if you sort of grab it at the wrong angle but you can pretty much touch the plant. Um, now I'm not sure what the flowers like on this are going to be like. Um, generally Libivias have incredibly impressive flowers so we'll have to wait and see. Um, this has got an awesome shape, I love it. Um, and nice and healthy as well. Um, bit of sand as a top dressing. So really happy with this guy. I don't know what that is, probably a little bit of little weed or something. Alright, and keep going. <clears throat> and this guy here, which is an incredibly popular cactus. Um, a lot of people look for this cactus and a lot of people pay a lot of money for this cactus. I um, fortunately didn't. Uh, <laughs> but this is Echinocereus. <clears throat> Um, and it's the Rubris spinus. There's another bit in there um, if you want to, but uh, I don't know, the writing's a bit, I can't really read the writing, but I know that it's uh, Rubris spinus. So, um, incredible pink colour, like have a look at that. Um, now, I don't uh, modify my videos in any way, like the lighting or anything like that, so um, this is exactly as it looks, and that's that incredible pink colour. Um, and these will actually grow quite large as well, so quite uh, large around and then uh, tall as well. So um, 
I love these guys. I actually think I already do have one or one very similar to this. Um, but I saw this guy and other people were snapping them up and I didn't want to be left out, so I got one too. Alrighty, and we're going to the lucky last now. And then we've got a Rebusha Heliosa Condorensis. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Um, now, I have a Rebusha Heliosa, um, but it doesn't look anything like this at all. Um, it's incredibly different. Um, I'll, uh, I'll put up a little, a little video uh, of the other Rebusha Heliosa that I have. As you can see, remarkable difference between the two. Um, so this would obviously, the difference would come down to the variety that this is. Um, I've got no idea how this is going to grow, um, but I really love the spines. Um, oops, I keep pushing on this other cactus, hang on. I was trying to zoom in, but uh, I do that manually, not with the zoom function. So I'll just see how close I can get before it uh, doesn't want to zoom in anymore. Come on. Sorry, my camera's decided that it doesn't there we go. So as you can see, the spines almost look like, I don't know, like little monsters or something. Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I've got a, a vivid imagination, but um, the, the little centipedes or something, little body and the little legs coming out. Really cool, really cool. Um, but I've honestly no idea uh, what to expect in terms of growth form, flowers, anything like that. Um, but either way, I mean, even if it was just to stay like this, I'd be happy, and if it just you know put up a few babies around, um, I really like it. Again, not one that's going to spear you. Um, no way at all. Um, but yeah, really nice looking plant. I'll just put them all back in, back in order and then we can uh, uh, run back through them quickly again. I'll tell you where I got them and uh, what happens from here. So what I do from here, uh, as I do with, uh, with any new cacti actually that I, that I bring in, is that I'll actually repot every single one of them. Um, and there's a couple of reasons that I do that. Um, the main one is for um, pest and disease control. So, I mean, I already know that this guy here has a, a few mealybug, um, and there could very well be some hiding, uh, you know, in the roots or just below the plant line um, that I can't see. Um, so I uh, will pull them all out of their pots, clean off all of the soil using a brush, um, so that I can make sure that there's no pests and diseases and I remove uh, any that I can see and it gives me a chance to check on the health of the roots as well. Um, and the other reason is that I want, I want these plants in my own soil mix. Um, and again, the, the reason for that is because I've been using the same soil mix for many, many years now um, or similar renditions of it. And so I know how it behaves. I know if I water today, for instance, I know that in three days it's going to be um, you know, partially dry and in five days completely dry, um, you know, depending on weather, obviously. But I know how it behaves um, and I know the effect that it has on the plants that I grow. So I, um, and again, this is nothing against what other people grow their cacti in. I mean, these are, are beautiful looking plants. They're healthy. Um, they're clean and everything like that. So it's not to say the mix that they're in um, that there's anything wrong with it. Um, nothing like that at all. Um, all I'm saying is that um, I know how my mix works. Um, and when you have a collection that's, uh, I don't know, three to 500 plants, something like that, I don't really know anymore how many I've got. Um, it makes sense to have um, your plants in a, in a mix that you know how it behaves because it's already um, challenging enough remembering um, when to water everything, um, let alone you know having to contend with different soil mixes. Um, so this is not me uh, paying out on uh, what other people choose to grow their cacti in. Um, it's just for me, uh, it's just, it just comes down to it being a lot easier for me to manage. So uh, I get asked a lot on uh, my videos to put, to put the names up. So I'm just going to go through them again, just so, um, just in case there was one in particular you were interested in and you wanted to find one for yourself. So we've got uh, Fralia asteroides here. Um, we've got Libivia, um, 
Pygmae, Echinocereus, uh, Rubris finus, Neoporteria um, flocosa, and Neoporteria clavata, and then we also have uh, Rebutia haliosa uh, condorensis down the end there. Um, now I was uh, lucky enough to pick these up for not very much money at all. Um, and I purchased these at a uh, cactus and succulent society meeting um, that I go to once a month. Um, <clears throat> and it's all, uh, you know, private sellers and home hobby growers that uh, come down and they uh, sell some of their excess plants or plants that they propagate for sale. Um, and it's probably my, one of my favourite places to buy cactus because these are not plants that you're going to find, uh, well in Australia anyways, uh, these aren't plants that you're going to find in a nursery or in um, you know, your local Bunnings or garden centre or things like that because these are not uh, commercially produced plants. Um, so uh, really, really happy to buy these and the good thing was you know, I got to, to chat with the, the grower and um, that's actually, I mean I knew that the Fralia asteroides was self-fertile but I actually got to talk with the uh, with the guy that, that grew this and he grew it from seed um, and he was the one explaining about the little pyramid coming up um, and things like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's information like that that is just uh, invaluable to a, a cacti grower and you know I had a few other conversations with other people there. Uh, I actually met one of my viewers um, so if you happen to be watching Hi Trent. Um, <laughs> so that was uh, that was a nice surprise as well. Um, but some cool little plants here. Um, I've got a lot of Arioses and um, I'm going to buy more of them because they're one of my favourites. Um, and if you watch the uh, uh, autumn cactus tour, you will have noticed uh, that I mentioned that I was upset that I got rid of my Echinocereus. Um, and so this is the the beginning of. Uh, rebuilding that uh, that arm of my collection because I miss um, I miss them um, and then Libivias I always grow and that's so just a few um, not a great deal of uh, plants but I'll um, no doubt be uh, adding more soon all right everybody thanks for watching and as always happy gardening bye